Good morning, Luke. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the cutting room floor. Thanks for having me. What time, what, which number is this? Do you know? Of our interview? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, four? I was hoping it was five. But... I think we've interviewed four times before. Oh, four. so this would be five. Oh, this might be five. I think Ooh. this is, but that's good. I think that's the record. I know. So long story short, I've interviewed Luke multiple times since 2018. They never published. I don't have a good reason for that. When I emailed you this time, I was like, cringe. He's not going to want to do this. He's like, bitch, get your shit together. You know, but this time we are going to publish it. And it'll be even more fun because I can take all the old video and put it in the interview. Which is great. I'm very excited about that. They'll see the growth. Yeah. yeah, They'll see the growth. No, when I got the email, I was actually in Paris and I was talking to somebody. They were like, yeah, I might be (laughs) doing an interview. And I was like fuck she's has not okay she doesn't want you don't want to finish it but yeah I mean, it's, it's time it, it's good it's I'm time excited. because people don't really know your story here's the thing i don't think that instagram people realize that you were native to youtube oh yeah you are a professional youtuber youtube is my bread and butter now you've said when it comes to socials that youtube is still the gold standard across all social media platforms from Why what is- i hear oh just because everybody that I talk to is like, I wish I had started a YouTube channel. I wish I had YouTube because it's mostly because the girls are like, oh, there's money at YouTube. The YouTube girlies have coins. But it's not just from what you hear, because I remember long ago when we first met, you DM'd me and you were like, I'm going to tell you this once and I'm going to tell you this one time only. Girl, you can't make money on Instagram. No. You can, you obviously. Can, in the- but like not, I wouldn't say like it's through the platform. It's through a brand reaching out. That's that's how it works. And it's the same thing with TikTok. I mean, TikTok is a little bit different now because they have like the creativity program thing. So you can make money, but like you have to have millions of views to be making not nearly what you would make on YouTube anyway. So yeah. it's a YouTube is like the gold standard in terms of actually being able to like have a life and having like financial stability as long as you're doing your job, which that's new for me. But uh because I just I never like do it I never do YouTube the way that I should, which is like one or two videos a week every single week. I'm like, oh I'm gonna miss a few weeks here or there, maybe possibly just because I haven't posted. So it's kind of come and go. But I feel like you understand that. Why do you think the fashion industry does not take YouTubers seriously? I think that because it's a platform that really does not speak to generations really older than like millennials to a degree. I mean, like there obviously are people that watch YouTube, but like people watch YouTube to figure out how to fix their sink. Um, Not looking at it for like content. And I think that probably the later end of millennials and the very early parts of Gen Z and now Gen Alpha were watching YouTube and were watching YouTubers. And that's kind of how the audience has worked. Whereas if you think about it in terms of like fashion PR in the past 10 years, it's been people that are millennials, Gen X that have been in charge of brands and things like that. So there wasn't that attachment to these YouTube personalities the way that like the younger people that are coming up in fashion would have been. That doesn't make sense to me, though, because you see fashion interacting with people on Instagram, influencers Mm -hmm. like the stylish, you know, bloggers gone influencers. And you see fashion interacting with TikTokers. Yeah. Or at least I do, especially the beauty brands. I know that's different from fashion, but, um, you know, partnerships, uh, you know, Tory Burch, Kate Spade, you know, ad, paid ads, whatever. They don't do it on with YouTubers. No. (laughs) I think it's just that YouTube almost got like bypassed to a degree. I think Instagram was easier. It was all photos and fashion historically has been very photo centric to a degree. I mean, like obviously your videos are runway, but like historically fashion photo shoots, fashion runways are pictures. So the coverage on there is just, I think, easier to pick up. And now with Reels, which Reels was like IGTV, which we talked about, I think in our first, um, what's it called, interview. That came from kind of like the YouTube era of video was king and then TikTok was musically and then became TikTok. And during the pandemic, that blew up. So So video was king. Video still is king. Yes. 100 percent. Without a doubt. And like if you think about it, too, like the er people are always like, oh, YouTube is long form. YouTube in the beginning, like Charlie bit my fingers. What? 10 seconds, 12 seconds. It's not a long video. So I think YouTube was like the first short form kind of platform to begin with anyway. It's just that, again, it was not really seen as like a content 
platform and the way that TikTok was presented to people as this is a content platform. Does that make sense? I guess in this, TikTok is kind of presented as like, or was presented during the pandemic as like, you already knew you could make money off of Instagram. Now you can make money on TikTok. Whereas when YouTube was born, there wasn't like the idea of making money on it. It was just places where you put stupid videos. Right, people had no concept mm -hmm. of like entrepreneurship. Yeah, and I just think fashion never got into YouTube because again, it just, the people that were in power at the time or still to a degree, just don't see it as like a important platform for fashion. Well, there's one YouTuber who the fashion industry has embraced and she is the unicorn, the only one. Who? You know. Emma? Yeah. Oh, love. Yeah. We love. We, we love. We stand. We. But why her? She's the only one that they've ever given any acceptance to. And she's sitting front row. Well, she Derek. has partnerships. You think it's Derek, Derek alone? Bill, yeah. Derek. I mean, it's not Derek alone. Like she's signed to UTA. I am also signed to UTA. Um, but because of Emma, actually, that's a great. That's oh, a, really? Yeah. hundred percent. So we stand. We really stand. Emma Chamberlain. So do you think Derek Blasberg is the reason why Emma is the only YouTuber who's ever crossed over into the fashion room with wide open arms she's not i'll say there's like lena mafouf who is a never French heard of YouTuber, her and that's my point but, but that's she's my french point. but she is very much so beloved by france um which is i i get but like emma i do genuinely think that like derek is the reason because that was derek's job hi derek oh you're muted derek are you there derek klosberg hi ricky hi Hi, Derek. Now I'm staring at a picture of myself and I'm not so happy about it. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. I miss you. It's New York Fashion Week. I've just launched youtube.com slash fashion. So I thought to celebrate, I should sit down with my favorite accidental fashion icon, Emma Chamberlain. Derek's job was to bring brands in to YouTube. It's like, that's why a lot of brands started to make content for YouTube, like Dior and Louis Vuitton and Chanel. But I also think his task was to bring fashion people in so like kate young who's a style fashion stylist kind of went on youtube um there are other stylists and sort of fashion no, people no, no, that but the industry content. was the industry was getting into youtube but yes. there was no one in reverse from youtube into but the industry the thing is at the same time youtube i think was like we have emma chamberlain she is a starlet especially at the time that he went which was like 2018 2019 it was like emma was it and i think that his job was also like working in tandem with UTA to sort of build out a relationship, a fashion relationship. And that was that LV ambassadorship. So mm -hmm. I think it was a joint thing between the two of like UTA and YouTube, but it was in everybody's best interest to forge that connection. Mm -hmm. And so I think now, I think that contract is up, uh, but now Emma still is a fashion girly and- She's in it. Yeah, because also the pandemic, I think changed the way that a lot of fashion brands operated where it was like they needed not just influencers of like the Instagram variety of like sit there and look pretty and doesn't matter how many likes you get, but also we should be inviting influencers outside of just our small little fashion realm. Now keep in mind, there was a time when Luke felt differently about this here subject. Okay, here's a clip from our interview in 2018 where Luke expresses his frustration on the matter. Take a look. You know, Derek Blasberg is now like the head of YouTube fashion. I do know that. So what's he getting right and what's he getting wrong? I don't think anything. Um, because here's my thing. YouTube has always been a place about creators who come from YouTube. It's always been, that's why people go on YouTube. Like, right. it, cause people have created a community. And I personally feel like, I'm sorry, I'm literally the only person besides Vogue, who is putting numbers on the motherfucking board mm -hmm. up there, because who else is going to get 100,000 fucking views about Karl Lagerfeld's most recent Chanel collection? It, it, not Show Studio. Uh, Ooh, not no, Show Studio, you're right. No. And, and I love Show Studio, not so much anymore. So but do I, I but, but it's I use, like... You, it is draw. you're right. I'm, I'm going to Show Studio right now. They have 97,000 subscribers, so you're already beating them in subscribers. But their latest post got no that's old well oh, go to videos i'll teach you the ways okay so 109 views damn 607 views you're right this is you're beating them by like hundreds of thousands so here's my thing derek blasberg is you know bringing on naomi campbell to start a youtube channel and victoria beckham anybody that watches fashion and watches youtube isn't like oh yes i needed naomi campbell to have a youtube channel i think people wanted like the content creators on YouTube who make fashion content to like actually get 
help. Or at least that's what I I want. I want help. Like I want somebody to be like, oh, do you like need a small team that can help you like create stuff? Like is that, you know? And like I get it. Naomi Campbell, she's great. She's amazing. We love her. But also like the first video she put out was about Nelson Mandela. And listen, I love Nelson Mandela. You know, fuck apartheid. But like, no, their 14 year old kids don't know who he is. They're just like, Nelson was so great. And I'm like, yeah, he was, but they don't know who the fuck he is. So tell him. Like, they don't get what YouTube is. You have to educate. You have to like actually tell people things. You have to like, you know, make it interesting and worthwhile watching. Otherwise, you get this. Even about Vogue. The only reason Vogue is getting views is because they have celebrities on there doing their makeup, like, or yeah, the, I, like, I actually love the 73 questions thing. That was a good idea. And I won't give Vogue the credit. I will give the two people that do it, actually, and one like a streamy for it. I will give them credit. But even that, it's like, where are the YouTube creators besides Liza Koshy? There literally are no YouTube creators on there. Mm-hmm. So like, you want to come in and like gentrify the shit out of YouTube and make it your fucking bullshit, polish, polish, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, you literally don't give a shit about any of the actual creators that have made this what it is. You just want to come on because your print shit is dead and you have nothing better to do and you really truly think that you still deserve to be something when you're dead and irrelevant. So mm-hmm. please explain. Well, talk to me also about the difference between fashion on Instagram and fashion on YouTube. That's the thing. People are like, IGTV, they're really trying to push that. You're never going to get anybody from YouTube to go on IGTV because Instagram doesn't pay you. And so like, that's why it's never actually going to work. And so from what I understand, as soon as IGTV was announced and Instagram killed Snapchat, that's what happened with the stories. But essentially Instagram put out, we're doing IGTV because they saw that YouTube was making bank and Mark Zuckerberg obviously wants his coin. That's when the announcement that Derek Blasberg was hired to go and be, you know, king Mm -hmm. of fashion beauty partnerships YouTube. You expressed in the past that you felt like you were not getting enough respect from the fashion industry, even though your views are getting hundreds, sometimes millions of views on fashion content. Mm. Do you feel like that's changed? Do you feel like the fashion industry accepts you or respects you more now? Yes, I do. I think it's also just come with time. I think the pandemic was really a changer because it was the first time that fashion brands were essentially trying to put out content aka like fashion shows or collections and somebody had to talk about them or somebody had to like look at these collections and display it to an audience and sort of try to explain it and on youtube i was doing that so whether it was oak couture shows or whether it was wait rewind i'm sorry to interrupt you why do you think the pandemic was unique to them needing to review shows people because always- you couldn't go to the show anymore so you couldn't keep out the people that historically had been on the outside. So the thing is like, if I went to Paris, people would be like, no, we're not inviting you to Dior, to LV or to Chanel. And so it was like, okay, well I would make content, you know, at home for YouTube. But the thing is all of these influencers couldn't go to the show anymore and post a picture of them in their last season clothes that they were wearing with the bag and the shoe. So what are they gonna do? Talk about a collection? No, let's be for fucking real. That's not what they like, do. That's my they job. Don't know, yeah, they don't <laughs> know how to do that. And with love and respect to all of them, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You go there and you look pretty and that's great, but that's mm-hmm. not going to do anything in the midst of the pandemic where somebody has to talk about this collection. Yeah, they're not going to be like this reverse jacquard with top white top stitching. <laughs> exactly. And it was like, what are you, you can send the outfit to their home where they can put it on in their living room. They but don't have does the language. Have, yeah, but does it have the same effect of the show set and the bag and being in Paris or Milan or New York? No, it doesn't. So the thing is, because YouTube also, the brands and I think the PRs were looking at what are ways that we are getting coverage and YouTube was a way that even though they historically hadn't looked at it, they were getting coverage whether they wanted it or not on Hall of Mode. And so they kind of had to bring it back a little bit there and say, oh, this is interesting. So I don't know, Prada was like the bi- the first brand that ever really was like, this is smart and this actually is like important to us. So they kind of recognized that. And then that was kind of like my first big, big invite. And then it slowly sort of opened and panned out from there. 